So that. I have to ask, you work with Lizzo. Is she uh, the queen she seems to be online? Oh my gosh, Lizzo is seriously like... Sydney Bell, welcome to Real Pod. Long time coming. I'm so glad you're here and in the flesh. Yes, I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Of course. <laughs> I've just been watching you for the longest time. And now you are like on TV. You're dancing. You're on stage. You're modeling. You're a creator. You're pushing your message. Like so many things. I can't. Where do we even start? First of all, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. So I like officially like made the move out here from Houston so I feel like just so happy to be like around my people and like working consistently. So I feel really good. You yeah. Know? Out in L.A. Yes. Yes. And have you been doing a lot of work here? Like people talk about what they think L.A. is. And oh. when you get here. <laughs> what have you thought about being actually now an L.A. person? I love it. So before officially moving here literally last week, I would come like every other month and stay basically for like the entire month. So I feel like mentally I was like kind of preparing myself for it. But living here here now like and having it be official and knowing like I don't go home to Houston after a month is kind of weird but I love it like I love being able to like work out here and be consistent because a lot of times I would get like last minute bookings and they'd be like hey we need you to I remember I was so heartbroken they called me to do Beyonce's Break My Soul music video what? literally and they were like oh be here in two hours and I was in Houston and I was like, oh, my gosh. So that's like the moment where I was like, I know now, like, I need to just move out there. Oh, my god! That like broke my heart. And I was like, I know when the music video comes out, like the official official music video comes out, I'm going to be heartbroken. So that is that is a painful one. Yeah, like, I'm not even you. And I'm sitting here like <laughs> I would have been like someone yes. time travel me. Like, yeah. Call Elon Musk. Get me. To yes, LA. literally. I was heartbroken. But I'm like, I'm starting to like do like my my little mental health journey and know that like whatever is for me is for me and if I don't make it I don't make it but yeah I love that because there are so many things and if we feel like we have to be everywhere at once it's actually impossible and you just never really know what is meant for you in Mm. life until you're farther down the road like I love quoting the Steve Jobs commencement speech if you can only connect the dots looking backwards Mm -hmm. Cause it's so true. Like, exactly. You know? Yeah. I can totally relate to that. And I've been thinking like ever since I was a little girl, like I've always, always, always been a perfectionist. Like even on the show, watch out for the big girls. That was like, my whole thing is like Sydney, like, you know, you're a perfectionist. Like sometimes you just got to let things go that used to eat at me. Like if I'd miss a booking or if I didn't get a job that I wanted or whatever it may be, I would always over criticize myself and think about it and like always think like oh my gosh when and that was just killing me so it's like now like within the past year or so like I've learned to kind of like back away and just like be like you know what just let it go like if I don't have control over it it is what it is when did you realize the perfectionism was killing you when I was on the show I think like a lot like the show really opened up my eyes to a lot of things like you know I realized on the show that like with me being a perfectionist it was really hurting myself I was thinking like if I was just able to just like allow things like if I didn't get if I didn't pick up on choreography right away the anxiety would make things so much worse and like think overthinking it would make it so much worse and that really caused a lot of issues on the show for me and also I think too on the show like when I opened up about like my eating disorder and I was so scared like because I I was a public figure, quote unquote, before even going on the show. So I was nervous. I was like, oh, my gosh, if I open up about this or if people find out about this, they're going to think I'm a fake. They're going to think I'm a phony because I preach self-love, love love yourself all the time. And I was like thinking like, oh, I don't want people to know about this. I got to be perfectionist. And like, you know, people got to see me as happy and perfect all the time. And Lizzo said something to me and she was like, people need to understand your hurt for them to like get your happiness. You know what I mean? Or to respect your happiness. And I was like. That is so true. And so, yeah, I think in that moment, like that entire month of filming, like I realized, damn, I'm a perfectionist and that's not really doing good things for me. And I kind of like let that go. And life has been like so much smoother since then, you know. I can't even imagine how you felt hearing those words from Lizzo in the moment because I'm getting chills from like the secondhand story, you know, and I had a binge eating disorder. So Mm. I relate to the shame of what will people think of this? Mm. And the added voice in your head of like, for me, 
you know, that doesn't even sound glamorous. Mm. Like I'm not, you know, I think society has this vision of what it looks like to have an eating disorder and it's usually a really, really skinny person. So (laughs) I like goosebumps when you said that. That is the biggest thing that I think kind of like mess with me when I was younger and going through that is like I struggled from two so I struggled with binge eating disorder and I struggled with like anorexia and not really eating in college and with anorexia people I like kind of like talked to some friends about it and they were like you're fine because I've always been a bigger girl but it's like that like when you said that again I had goosebumps because there's such a stigma that comes behind it like oh if you have binge eating disorder you must be like super super big and super unhealthy or if you have anorexia nervosa you have to be super super tiny but no like everybody can be affected by it men women plus size people skinny people so I'm really glad that you talked about that because I hate that society has a lot of issues with that from both perspectives the side of you don't look like you could have an eating disorder Mm -hmm. and you don't look like you're unhealthy Mm. right when they just see skinny people and think there can't be anything wrong with them you know and I feel like the most unhealthy people I've come across when it comes to food are the people who in society are being praised for their image but Mm. behind closed doors the way they're achieving that isn't something that should be encouraged because of like how unhealthy it is. Absolutely. That kind of reminds me of something I went through to like in college. My whole eating disorder was not triggered by me necessarily like wanting to lose weight purposefully. It was through my doctor kind of. And I don't mean to put the blame on her, but my story is like really different from a lot of other people that struggle with eating disorders because I went to my doctor before going to college and I was like, I think I have ADD, ADHD. And my doctor was like, okay, like stand on the scale. Well, you know what a normal doctor would do when you go to the doctor's office. Which I'm sorry. Why are we weighing someone who's coming in about a a mental anxiety disorder? Why are we weighing them? That part. That was like, and when I got on the scale, like uh, immediately her whole demeanor changed. She was like, oh, well, what's your workout and eating like? And like all of these different things. And I'm just, my mom's sitting there like, why are you asking this stuff? And the craziest thing that she did was say, okay, she didn't even test me for if I had ADD or ADHD, right? She was just like, okay, well, I think you have binge eating disorder, which at the time I did, you know, binge eating disorder can be triggered through stress, whatever it may be. I was so stressed out. It was like my senior year. People had all these expectations for me. And I just remember like she instantly was like, I'm going to prescribe you this Adderall for binge eating disorder. It'll help suppress your appetite, but it'll also help you with your ADD, ADHD, whatever. And I'm sitting there like, okay. My mom's like, okay, I guess like whatever. Like we were clueless because this stuff has me fuming. Oh yeah. Fuming. This is the kind of stuff where like, I can't, like, it has me actually so angry because of the dynamic of a a person who's in a position of power, a position of knowledge that what they say you need to trust because they are a A doctor. doctor. Exactly. And for them to lead with what I think we know a lot of the professionals in this space, like, have their own internalized, like, fat phobia and inability to actually inspect the root of the issue Mm. and not look at someone's body and say it's a weight thing. Yeah. I mean, I was at my OBGYN and I have PCOS, Mm -hmm. so polycystic ovarian syndrome. And one of the first things my OBGYN said was, let's cut all dairy and gluten because, you know, people with PCOS are usually like more bloated Mm -hmm. or something. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you can't just look at a random stranger and say, let's cut two food groups. Like, and this is why I can hold my own in this situation. I was just like, which by the way, I have the privilege, I think, to do that, that I felt that I could speak back to this doctor Mm. and say, I have a history of eating disorders, so I will absolutely not be cutting food groups. Oh my gosh. I applaud you for that. Cause I'm like one of those people that's just like, you know, I guess in my mind, it's because I think a doctor, like you just said, like, I'm like, they're the professional, whatever. And it's like, I think my mom and I both kind of knew in that moment, like, this is not right. But we were just kind of like, too, I don't know if it was me being too shy, because I know for a fact, when I was taking the Adderall, I 100% felt awful, right? I was taking it, I felt really bad for like months, like that crash that comes from it. I was just like, so I was angry at the world. I was like over emotional, but I was like, I guess like I'm just going to keep I didn't speak up for myself. So I really applaud you for like being able to do that because 
it's hard. I don't know why. Like, I don't know why it's hard. it was hard for me at that time. You, but I don't even think you should, you know, you have to have the compassion for yourself because my, the experience I just detailed was like within the year. So I'm, you know, and I'm 25. Mm -hmm. I'm, you know, very confident in my shoes, but in high school could be a completely different situation. And as totally we said, different. it's the authority of the being the doctor. Mm -hmm. So that is what you believe kind of kickstarted the anorexia. Oh yeah. Thousand percent. Because you know, I was in college. I was like around a whole bunch of new people. And mind you, in high school, I was in Texas. I was in the Woodlands, Texas. So it was like, you know, predominantly white community. I was the only plus size girl. People would always make fun of me. But then I went to Brooklyn, New York. So it was like totally diverse, super fun. You know, guys were starting to look at me and I was like, OK, cute. And when I was <laughs> taking the medicine, you know, the medication, it allowed me to I wasn't really eating. But I didn't at the time think that it was an eating disorder. It wasn't clicking to me at that time that it was an eating disorder. And then I remember with, you know, the crashes that I just talked about, I would like overwork out to kind of compensate and get the energy that I was lacking from the crashes. And literally for about four to six months, like I was so, so skinny. I was so sick. Like, but then people... And this is around the time, too, in 2017, where I was, like, become first starting to become an influencer. And people were just coming up to me and commenting on my pictures and saying, oh, my gosh, and you look so good. Like, you look beautiful. Guys were, like, starting to talk to me. I want to, like, go out with me and different things like that. And I, like, this was also at the time where I was, like, okay, like, this crash is too much for me. I don't want to take it anymore. But once I realized it was an eating disorder is when I stopped taking the medication. But I still kept up with those really horrible habits of, like, not eating and working out excessively, like, three times a day and running excessively and different things like that. And I, I remember I came home from spring break and my mom was, like, you're angry all the time. She's, like, you're not eating. And, you know, I'm a Southern girl, so... I loved going home to eat, mm -hmm. but she noticed something and my brother also noticed too. And they just took me on a walk one day and had a conversation with me. And they were like, we've seen over the past few months that you've been losing weight and whatever. And, you know, it was scary too, because with always being a big girl and always like kind of people making fun of me for that, I was scared in a way to kind of get help because it was like, I was getting all of this like positive attention at that time and like people again were like wanting to go out with me and um I'm sorry no it's okay it's like I think back to those times now because it's like how could I do that to myself and it's like now I'm like so th it's like weird because it's like I'm so mad and I'm so upset that those things happened but I'm so thankful that they happened because just like Lizzo said like People need to see your hurt to understand and accept your happiness. And I feel like for me, like going through that allowed me to like go through like a really effed up part of my life. But it like allowed me to like have a reason to live and a reason to like put these messages out in the world and be everybody's cheerleader. Because it's like I don't ever want somebody to go through what I went through. Like <laughs> if and I'm just like. I cannot wait for the day that I have a daughter because I'm going to be like, girl, eat, do your thing, <laughs> dance, like jump around, run, do whatever you want. Like I just, yeah, I get really emotional because it's like, I, I'm like, damn, like I really went through that. And it's all because of like society's perception of me. And it's like my peers perception of me. And I don't even see them anymore. Mm -hmm. And those people are in my DMs now. So, <laughs> you know what I Same mean? Same like, Sydney, yeah. me. hey, Like, no, I don't actually. Oh. But yeah, it's just wild. Like everything happens for a reason. Mm -hmm. I'm a firm believer in that. It is tough to sit now with the love that you give yourself and then remember how you used to treat yourself at a different yeah. time. And it can kind of come out of nowhere. Oh, yeah. But it is the driving force for remembering there are people who felt like that version of you felt right now. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that that's what motivates you Absolutely. to kind of put the message out there. Absolutely. So how does that play a role in your confidence about being so honest and about being vulnerable and kind of sharing the things that caused you shame earlier? Honestly, like it just really fuels my fire to just kind of like, you know, there's still Although like time has passed and there's been like a lot of like great achievements in media and in the industry, like there's still so many things that need to be like 
fixed, I guess, in an aspect. We're, I think we're going back to the way it was. You think? I mean, with the like Ozempic mm. hype right now and the the magazine that was like heroin chic is back. <laughs> yeah. It's like I really feel like all these people have worked so hard mm-hmm. and now we're seeing media go back. Yeah. I could agree with you, but it's like I agree, but in ways like I feel like it's all about like I think you actually made a post about this once and it really like inspired me to do the same. It's like curating your, you know, your surroundings and your feed Mm -hmm. to be like what you need to see. Yeah. And I feel like, yeah, a thousand percent, you know, I feel like sometimes we're going back to like how things were and those toxic habits. But I also really feel like there's so many powerful people that are up and coming and powerful women and men and humans that are just really like, you know, curating that space. So I just think it all depends on like, where are you like, you know, who you surround yourself by and like what you allow yourself to see. Cause for me, it's like, I allow myself to watch certain things. I make sure because I know I have anxiety in the mornings. Like I don't go on social media. You know, there's just a lot of things that I've like changed my life around to make sure that I'm not triggered by those things anymore because they do pop up all the time. And I feel like that's how it's always going to be. You know, I need to take that to heart. The no phone in the morning, social media in the morning. I say I'm going to do it. I Mm -hmm. try to do it. And then it's just right there. And yeah. I get, it's not but it's not a good habit because it literally does affect my mood so heavily. Mm-hmm. But to your point of curating the feed, surrounding yourself with the people. Girl, I got that from you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. From you. Love it. Yes, I'm honored because I get so much from you. Yes. You told me right before we sat down that we're we are doing some relationship filtering. Mm-hmm. Just went through a breakup. How recent is that? Oh, yeah, that's probably like. Three or four weeks ago. Damn. So like Mm. feels like yesterday. Yeah. Literally feels like yesterday. It is so painful because he was somebody that, you know, was one of my best friends before we even started dating. And I loved him so much. And with doing what I do and you know how important this is to have somebody that really, really supports you and everything that you do, especially with being in this industry. He was probably one of the first guys that I dated that was genuinely supportive of what I did. However, (laughs) he was just somebody that, you know, I love me, my skater boys. He's super fun. But it's just like we were at two different levels and points in our lives to where I felt like there was a lot of things that I needed and that I wanted and I knew I deserved that he wasn't able to give to me, he says. But. In my head, he said, I can't give you what you deserve. Yeah. But I'm like, why is it so easy for me to be able to give you things that you necessarily don't deserve sometimes? But it is what it is. And what are some of the things that you deserve that you don't feel like you were getting? So I I understand that with him. I did settle a lot because I loved him as a person during the relationship. I took our friendship and the like energy that we had, you know, before us dating as like, this is good for me. Like, as long as I can have somebody that I can talk to that cares about me, that calls and checks in, whatever it is, I'm good. Like, I'm very low maintenance when it comes to relationships. But as my life started to change in the past year, I started to realize like, wait, I want to be celebrated for certain things. He was supportive. Like, I'd go to swim week and he'd be like, oh my God, I'm so proud of you. Like, you know, have your thing. Because I'd date guys that I would go to swim week or go out of town for work and they'd be like, where are you? What are you doing? Like, why aren't you calling me back? He'd be like, girl, do your thing. I love you. Yeah, which the first type of guy, that's such a red flag. Oh, yeah. You want a guy who's so proud and wants you to succeed and like take over the world. Yes, absolutely. Because this is someone that you had a friendship with and you had this relationship and he's been there for some of these big moments. How are you navigating these lonelier nights when you don't have that FaceTime chat or text message? It has been the hardest thing ever to do. And I think that's why I literally picked everything up and just said I'm going to L.A. Because, you know, my parents are great and supportive and everything. But it's like that was always my thing. It's like, oh, I do this great shoot or whatever. I go back to the hotel and it's like the first thing I do is call AJ and tell him about it. But then I started to realize, like, towards the end of the relationship and once we started to, like, you know, clash a lot, I realized I would tell him these things and the reaction or the response would just kind of be like, oh, okay, that's cool. Like, it wouldn't, you know, like, people now ask me, what is it that you miss about him? And I always say that. It's like, oh, I miss calling him and talking to him after an event. But now that I'm thinking about it, it's like, 
I wasn't really getting that much. Mm -hmm. So what's helping me now really is like developing like really healthy and good relationships. Jordan, like my best friend in the entire world, like I could cry right now because that's like I called him during my breakup and told him everything that was going on. And he would just like say things and remind me and be like, like, what is it that you're really going to miss from him? Mm -hmm. Like, you can find that in me. Or like even when we were at a restaurant earlier, he was like, you can always come to me and talk to me. Like, if you're ever tempted to call him or whatever, like, call me. And, like, I actually have somebody now that I can, like, call and they care about my day. It's not just like, oh, cool, you know, whatever. It's like, oh, tell me more about it. And, like, hey, let's go do this. Like, we both share a common interest. Like, I just yeah. I just think it's picking up everything and finding genuine, healthy relationships. Mm -hmm. And that's always been something that I kind of struggled with with dating. Like, people that right. see my Instagram, they're like damn okay you had this one boyfriend and then now three years later you got another <laughs> yeah I've always struggled with that in dating not so. to sp speak out of turn because I don't I didn't know this boyfriend or the relationship but mm -hmm. you know from an outsider perspective it just sounds like you're in a different universe with mm -hmm. what you're doing and where you're going mm -hmm. he's in a different one Absolutely. and you can have love for this person mm -hmm. and think they're a good person and care about them and want the best for them and realize you need someone in your orbit yeah because it just sounds like there's just a disconnect of like maybe he doesn't understand how hard it was to get X thing or Absolutely. the importance of it because in his universe, it's just the normal day to day and that doesn't really exist. Exactly. So, you know, and I think those are the hardest breakups where you don't walk in and see them cheating on you and you mm -hmm. can hate them forever. Yeah. It's the like, I love you and you love me, but yes. we're not supposed to be together. Absolutely. It's exactly that. And like, even after the breakup, like we kind I mean, we still talk every now and then and it's, you know, it feels good to be able to still have that person that is a friend. But it's like I kind of learned over time and especially through this breakup, like he can be my friend, but it's like there's certain things that I know. Like you, we all have those friends where it's like, oh, I can easily go and tell you this and I know that I'll get this response of support and the things that I need. But it's like if something big happens, I might not necessarily go and tell that person. So he's that person that it's just like we still have love for each other. Like he'll call and be like, oh, I'm going to tell you right and blah, blah, blah. I won't connect on those things. But it's like only that. Yeah. So I'm blessed to still have that with him. But I just miss... I don't even know what I miss. I just miss having a person. Yeah, you know? it's like the freaking Austin Butler, Vanessa Hudgens memes on the internet mm. of like how many years they spent together and yeah. now she walks by and tries yeah, not I to don't see want him. To, I don't ever want to be like that with him and that's scary. My favorite quote, this too shall pass, you know, everything with time. Mm -hmm. You're in your single era now. What does yeah. that mean for you? Oh my God. Are you a party girl? Do you, do you want to get on the dating app? Do you want to meet people? <laughs> Are you taking it slow? Girl, so I'm on the dating app already. But, <laughs> but yeah. I like, I think like mentally, like I am just so like that relationship did take a lot out of me. I gave this man so much mentally, emotionally, physically, financially, a lot. I gave him a lot. So I now need to heal Sydney and like really like refocus on, you know, things that make me happy. Cause I feel like for so long in that relationship, I dedicated a lot of time and energy to making him happy and putting some things that I love aside to make him happy or feel celebrated the things that I was all lacking I gave that all to him because I was like maybe if I give that if give more and more of that to him he'll give give me some of that that he's not giving me already so I'm I think in this point like I went to Vegas this past weekend guys were like oh my god blah 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 I was like yeah cool whatever because <laughs> I really on. like I'm just so like it's crazy like I'm just so in love with Sydney again. Like, even yeah, if it's just only been career, a few weeks. Right. You know, exactly. You, there's not, that's a one relationship in itself. And yeah. maybe you're at a place where that's your, that's your baby. That's your priority. Mm -hmm. And you'll trust that the right person will come along throughout yeah. that journey. Yeah. I have a question for you. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Ask me anything. <laughs> Flip the script. You have such a beautiful, like, relationship. Like, I look at y'all for hope. I guess my question to you is, like, how did you just know that this was your person, considering the fact that you had, like, a career, a career that's, like, totally different? Yeah. And you know what I mean? Like, how did you know? For sure. And, you know, in the beginning of my relationship with Max, he was a football player, thought he would play pro. He didn't. So he went and was like, hey, babe, I need to go take this job in New York. And like, I'm in LA, you know, because he had no resume, no, exp and he was like, I don't know what I want to do with my life. And this is what I want to do. So from both sides, we, we had really different career paths, but 
I think we, people say when you know, you know, and mm-hmm. I know that that is so cheesy, but I do think when you're with someone and you realize I cannot imagine my life without them, you, you have the security of feeling like, okay, go kill it. Like, let we're going to call. I'm going to visit you in two months. You know, we'll do the long distance. And we I was like, distance. yeah, we did. We did long distance for two years. Wow. Which really strengthened our communication in the beginning. Absolutely, yeah. But um, I and then with me pursuing my stuff, you know, a huge thing is he's a supporter. Like I went and I threw the first pitch at the Giants game and he came and he's filming it. I don't think a lot of guys want to go watch their girl yeah. throw the pitch at a sports game. Like their no. ego's acting up. That could yeah. have been me. I was nothing. Yes. He has none of that. So wow. I think for us to work, especially with having a, a really career driven entrepreneurial woman, mm-hmm. you need a guy who has no ego and who is hyped to see you succeed and he can succeed as well. And then I also think being able to have a joy for each other having their own lives in a sense. Mm. Like to be happy that you have your friends in LA or that you're building something and not to feel this anxiety of yes. I'm not it and or I need to be their whole world. So, and I think it comes with just emotionally mature people that part, yeah. and it's hard to find emotionally mature men. <laughs> yeah, no, for real. That's like, I love that you just said that, like, you know, not putting all of, cause that's in a way kind of like what I did, like putting all my energy into that person. And then it's like, you know, you break up and it's kind of like you have this like loss of identity in a way like you will. And I say this to my single besties, your person will come along as you keep going through your journey and you keep doing your thing. The right you have to believe in the plan and the right thing always happens. And it's like I love the quote that like happiness is like a butterfly. Yeah. If you go search, if you go to trying to catch it, you can't get it. But when you sit down mm, and relax, and re- it just... lands right on top of you. So I have to ask, you work with Lizzo. Is she Uh, the queen she seems to be online? Oh my gosh, Lizzo is seriously like the coolest person I've ever met in my entire life. Yeah, (gasps) I'm like, and I, like we talked about earlier, I was like, celebrities, you're always so nervous to meet them. Like Lizzo was my hero. And she's like off camera, on camera, the exact same. Crazy, wild, like the biggest supporter like she still comments and like dms us just to check in every now and then Uh like she'll do these zoom calls and just be like hey how's everything so she's really sweet she's really sweet and i'm always inspired by her and i'm i'm like honestly like super thankful to her too because like in so many ways like she changed my life and you know they're coming out with a season two (gasps) yay are they so any big girls (laughs) any big girls that are wanting to like i think she's taking like singers now too so yeah singers and dancers so yeah she's she's really amazing like she's blessed us with so many different opportunities i personally was not selected to go on tour but she's like blessed me with so many amazing opportunities to do BET, SNL, music videos. So, yeah. yeah. And hey, it's one of those things where you might get some super cool call mm-hmm. that if you were on tour you couldn't take it, you know? Yes. So and that's why I'm thankful too cuz I think it it was kind of like talked about a little bit of like, you know, with me already having this career beforehand, like building something from 2017 all by yourself like I just could not give that up like I I remember filming I booked fashion week like my first New York fashion week oh my gosh. and I couldn't go because I was filming Lizzo and filming watch out for the big girls so you know like I said things that are for me are for me things that aren't mm-hmm. are not this has been the best I feel like this was such an authentic I like we're literally just like at a I'm sleepover. like we're having like a little drink truly and, out, and I'm so glad we got to talk about kind of healing after breakup yes, because yes. I haven't had someone so close to something like that come yeah. on and share so openly if you had to just leave us with like the one thing you're kind of carrying with you to keep peace this month as you juggle all the things what's grounding you yes yeah, so this is like me always my whole main character thing like live your life as the main character and I've started to do that again I noticed that I was like falling into like the supporting role you know and I just think like I've been living life as a main character and that includes removing villains (laughs) that are in my movie and adding some supporting characters also changing setting if you need to and for me I changed my theme specifically in this chapter aka this month to self-love and fully just loving Sydney so this chapter is a new chapter and I'm like 
really embracing it and just, you know, adding on to it and things that benefit not only me, but the people that are around me and the people that I talk to every single day through the internet. So yeah, just live your life as the main character. I am receiving that. I'm taking that with me. I'm wearing yes. my crew neck says I'm in my reputation era. I love that. That's the yes. Taylor Swift album yes. where it's just oh. like <laughs> bad bitch vibes of like her reputation era was like, I I am in my era of doing what uh, I want, yes. what makes me happy, and I don't yes. care what people think. Yes. I'm like, if maybe if I wear this, I'll feel I it. I love it. <laughs> Have you met her yet? I did meet her. Okay, yeah. Once. <laughs> yeah, I did. Life complete. Need I to love do it, it again. I Taylor, love it. if you're listening, come on the pod. Come on the pod, girl. Thank you, Sydney. You're Thank a rock you star. Thank you so much. Okay, that was amazing. amazing. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Real Pod. If this hit home or helped you in some way, send it to a friend, a teammate, roomie, share the love, share the realness. New episodes of Real Pod come out every single Wednesday. So make sure you are subscribed to this podcast so you never miss an episode. 